So as part of reflective writing, we've identified different stages for writing and um, we've look, also looked at um, some problems around reflective writing. And what's important for the reflective practitioner to consider is how to overcome some of the barriers that we might experience um, when trying to apply this tool um, to our practice. Um, some of these barriers uh, we bring ourselves uh, as people, as teachers, to reflective writing. Others are imposed on us from outside. So let's take um, a look through some of these barriers. Um, um, I've highlighted some of the common barriers. There undoubtedly can be others which you will face as a teacher. The important thing is not to be... Um, uh, confused by them but to try to find your own strategies for overcoming them. Very often teachers talk about not having enough time um, in order to uh, uh, do their reflective writing or not having the right sort of space. Um, for example, um, uh, having a, a very busy family life means that there would not be the right sort of space to sit down and conduct um, uh, a reflective process um, and or, or, or to fill out a, a reflective journal. So um, a, a perhaps one strategy to, to use to overcome this would be to um, use your uh, journey to and from work in order to complete a journal. Um, if you're sitting in the back of a car, you could quickly make some notes. Um, 20 minutes here and there, 10 minutes here and there could actually um, produce very big dividends for you as a reflective practitioner. Um, try to find any time that you can in order to do this. Um, it's also very useful um, to think about talking to a colleague, um, um, perhaps during a break or over lunch, uh, somebody you trust and who will be honest with you. Um, this can actually help you um, focus your thinking. So when you are doing your reflective writing, it can, uh, uh, it'll uh, be much quicker to do. Um, you could extend this to a group discussion, um, especially maybe in a faculty lounge or a staff room. If there are three or four of you sitting there, a group discussion around a particular issue can uh, help speed up the process even more. Um, uh, a self-imposed uh, barrier to reflective practice can be our own negative ideas, um, especially when we're experiencing bad situations in our teaching, especially around behavior. Um, it's actually not uncommon for all of us to experience negative ideas. And what we need to do is not allow these to consume our thinking, to take over our thinking um, when we're reflecting. Um, although it can be difficult, it's very important to try to push the feelings aside and to look at things very objectively. And again, a very useful strategy to help you do this would be to have a colleague who can uh, look much more objectively, much more realistically at situations uh, because they're not involved in them. Also try... Um, uh, you know, try giving yourself a little bit of extra time um, uh, uh, before you start reflecting to let your feelings cool down uh, and help yourself relax. Um, organizational culture can actually be a barrier to reflection simply because the organization doesn't have um, the right um, structural arrangement to give you time, give you the space or to support reflection. Um, and an important thing to do here is to realize that the uh, reflective practice is a good tool to improve quality. So maybe it's uh, worth talking to your organization, talking to your manager, talking to the head of the school about having time for reflection, whether it's individual or group. And of course, um, an important consideration in relation to overcoming barriers is our own fear of um, uh, uh, the, the actual critical process itself. 
um, this can be very difficult. Um, the best way to overcome this is to um, use a critical friend, use an honest colleague, a truthful colleague, who can not only uh, help you see things clearly, but can give you a lot of support and encouragement at the same time. Um, lack of knowledge and experience is, uh, for new teachers, perhaps the most significant barrier. The important thing I would say here is that what you need to do is to give yourself time to develop skills for reflective practice, and it will become easier as you grow as a professional. And don't see it as a success or failure process. It is very much um, about uh, thinking. It's purely a thinking tool. It's not about being critical, being negative. It's about being reflective. So with reflective practice, you can see that there are a number of barriers which need to um, be overcome. And if you engage in reflective writing, you will have ample opportunity to overcome these barriers. And certainly as your career progresses, you'll see that happening. Um, some um, teachers actually um, can find the process of reflective writing um, quite, uh, quite scary, um, uh, create some sort of anxiety. And um, this is quite normal as part of the reflective process. And shouldn't be seen as a barrier but um, what I would say again is to try to be objective about the critical writing about the reflective writing and to rely on support within the school and from colleagues and friends in the school um, the most significant barrier is that reflective practice can become quite routine um, and therefore it be can become uncritical um, what you need to do is to make sure that you are reflecting critically. Perhaps share your reflective writing with others and get their perceptions, ideas and feedback about how critical and how uncritical your writing is being.